Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I'm gonna do a talk on deploying an ERC721 smart contract and minting an NFT on it. Uh, we're gonna be deploying that to Avalanche testnet first and then to mainnet and then we're going to be using Anchor as the RPC. Uh, at the end, I'm going to show you a quick demo on a multi-chain NFT gallery. Uh, we have a multi-chain API that we're working on that's compatible with Ethereum and then five layer twos that, that I'll be showing you. And I guess I should start by saying my name is Josh Stein. I go by Josh CS online. So um, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so yeah, as I mentioned, uh, my name is Josh. I, kind of just fell into the whole Web3 world uh, this past summer. I graduated uh, business school last year, and I had this like really deep passion to not go work for the government. Uh, I live in the DC area, so like I started seeing people doing NFT launches and mostly artists making their way into the professional working world as artists uh, through NFTs. So I was like, okay, w what is all this? Uh, I have a tweet up here from someone named Drifter Shoots. Uh, he was able to basically uh, break free from the justice system that was pretty much wrongly imprisoning him through selling his art as NFTs. Uh, I, I then minted an NFT to DeveloperDAO, and that was kind of what kicked everything off for me. Uh, so I minted the NFT in October. Uh, I joined the Discord, kind of found out that there were a lot of devs in there from like the big companies that I knew, but also from this new world of Web3. Uh, and really joining that Discord kind of helped me realize that if you're able to build things and ship them, uh, you definitely have a shot in working in Web3. It's not like the traditional FANG jobs where you have to have certifications and degrees and everything. If you are really driven to build, uh, it's something that pretty much anyone who has the passion to do it can do. So this was like also the first use case aside from art that I understood what an NFT could be and what it could mean in terms of like having some kind of usage besides like being a magic internet token. Uh, so I saw people in the developer DAO Discord using BuildSpace to learn and I signed up for a cohort that started the next day. Uh, this was the first time that I was writing a smart contract First time I was deploying it, uh, I built a wave portal so people can sign in with their wallets, send a message, and then it shows up on a dApp. Um, I guess like personally, one of the things that really helped me, I started a Twitter account, started sharing what I was doing. Uh, that helped me build a network, but also connect with developers who were similar in their, their journey. Um, and I guess like ultimately like using those networks, uh, Discord and Twitter and DeveloperDAO is pretty much what helped me start working with Anchor. Um, I had the, I don't watch American football, but I had the, someone from the New England Patriots re reach out to me on LinkedIn after I started sharing my progress. Um, and he wanted me to do an NFT collection for them. That didn't go through, but um, I guess the, the point of this is that sharing your progress is, is worth a lot. Um, the, the space for developers in Web3 is pretty small. Um, I guess another like pointer that I have, it's more just like this is my journey and you can do what you want. But uh, I built, I, I saw people buying the constitution in America and I was like, oh my goodness, this is the most ridiculous thing ever. Uh, we have the power to pretty much build whatever we want in this Web3 world. Uh, so one of my build space projects was making like a, a wellness DAO for mental health focus. Um, I'm going to skip through this to get to the contract part, but I guess basically if you do join a DAO, um, no one's going to tell you what to do. You kind of just have to take your own initiative and, and start working. So what I started doing with developer DAO, basically worked full time as a scribe. Uh, I scribed our first town hall, took notes, and that was actually my first pull request. Uh, attending, in, attending and participating in DAOs is definitely something that helped me uh, get to where I'm at today. So I guess a little bit about Anchor. Um, we're a decentralized infrastructure provider. We currently have nodes and validators and archive data. Well, nodes for 15 different networks. We have an enhanced API that I'm gonna demo a little bit later. Uh, we also have a gaming SDK for Unity and Unreal. Uh, we also have a node provisioning program for allowing community nodes to be put up onto the network and keep going in the direction of decentralization. 
Um, I guess also we are taking a community first approach. Uh, we're building out an anchor DAO. Um, so that will allow token holders to have a say in the way that the network goes. But essentially, we help developers build applications faster and easier. Our endpoints that are public don't require an account or a login or anything. You can just copy the endpoint and start building. Um, so in terms of what we do, we have support for writing and trans sending transactions. We also have archive data for reading and, and seeing historical data. And then I guess the missing piece is the, the on-ramp. Uh, so we allow people to build their own infrastructure using our network, and this could include wallet dApps and I guess eventually even a fiat on-ramp. So I guess I've been saying Web3 a lot, and it would make sense to kind of tell you what I think it is. Um, I think it's really a system where the community owns the network, uh, where our ownership is shared in the communities through like tokens, ERC721 and ERC20 and 1155s as well. Um, I've mentioned a few places where I learned things, so if you're interested, I feel like I'm standing in front of the screen too much. Um, you can scan this QR code. It goes to a list of tools on uh, my personal website. And then why do smart contracts matter? Uh, they basically add intelligence to the blockchain. Uh, so this can be used for token vesting, NFT collections, for voting structures and governance. Um, and I think we're going to see that go into the supply chain. And uh, basically, at the core of it, they allow people to have digital ownership over assets. So we're going to go over an ERC721 contract here in a second. Uh, ERC721 is what describes the schema for a non-fungible token. Uh, also, probably have heard of it as an NFT. And that is described by the, sorry, by the standard that is on Open Zeppelin. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get into the smart contract side of this now. Uh, our public RPCs are available at anchor.com slash protocol slash public. Like I mentioned, you can copy any of those and get building uh, with no account or login or anything. And if you'd like to follow along on GitHub, I have the repository up there. I'm going to kind of speed through it so I wouldn't expect you to be able to keep up uh, because I couldn't. But if you want to revisit it later, I also have the instructions in a readme on there. So in order to get started, like one of the biggest troubles I've run into when starting new projects is actually getting the dev environment set up. Uh, so for this one, we're going to need Node.js. We're going to have NPM to manage our packages. Uh, I like to use VS Code. It's just what I'm familiar with. And then we also want to have Avalanche on our MetaMask. And you can add that by going to our site and clicking the MetaMask button. And you'll also want to obtain some test AVAX. So to get started, we're going to make a directory uh, called AVAX Anchor and change into that directory. We'll initiate NPM, install hardhat, and run hardhat. After we accept the blank project for hardhat as what we're going to work with, we're going to make a contracts directory and a scripts directory. So in that contracts directory, we're going to create a new AVAX avalanche nft.sol. This is going to be a solidity file, and that's going to be what our smart contracts are written in for the Ethereum compatible blockchains. Uh, we're going to specify the license and as an MIT license as well. And then we're going to import uh, some standards from Open Zeppelin that describe what the token is and how it's counted and an ownable contract to allow the owner to be set to uh, the address that we want. So to start out, we're going to begin the contract, uh, name it. We're going to classify that it's an ERC721 URI storage and that it is ownable. Uh, we're going to use counters to count up every time there's a new token. So if I'm token zero, it'd be one, two, three. Um, and then we're going to set the name of the token to Anchor AVAX NFT and then set the the symbol for the token is anchor AVEX. So the second part of the contract, we're going to add the mint function. That allows us to set a recipient address, which is going to be whoever we choose. Uh, we're going to set the token URI, which is going to basically 
tell us in the ERC 721 standard what the title is, what the description is, a link to the, the image that is going to be hosted on IPFS, and then we can add categories or uh, blanking out. Basically different traits for that NFT. Um, so we're going to increment the token by one each time that we we have a new mint function that, or each time the mint function is run, we're going to increment the token ID by one. We're going to set the recipient. We're going to set the item ID, and then for that URI, we're going to set the new item ID and the token URI of the new token. At the end, we're going to return the new ID. So at, at the core of it, or at the end, I guess this is going to be what the contract looks like. It's not very big, but it's pretty powerful. At least I think so. Uh, so next we're going to need to get Ethers JS installed, and that's going to allow us to communicate with the blockchain. We're going to save uh, .n .env as well, and that'll help us hide our environment variables because uh, we're going to have our public or private key in there. We don't want that to be something that we commit to GitHub on accident. Uh, we want to be really careful with your private keys because your wallet could easily be comp compromised. So next we're going to change our module.exports file. Uh, we're going to specify the network. Here we're going to have uh, Avalanche and also Fuji, which is the testnet for Avalanche. We're going to take our private key from our ENV file and put that in there so that we can actually talk to the blockchain. And then we're also going to set the Snowtrace API key um, from our EMV file in a second here, and then have Snowtrace as the place that we're going to verify the contract so that people who are interacting with it know that it is real and legitimate. So our ENV file is going to have our private key in it, our Snowtrace API key, our contract address for calling the mint function later on, and then the public key. And We'll get to the latter two in a, in a second. So first, you're going to want to copy your MetaMask private key. Uh, you can do that by going to account details and then export private key. Again, this is something you'd like never, ever want to share with anyone, so be careful. Now we're going to compile the contract by running npx hardhat compile. Um, if all is good and you did everything previously correctly, you're going to see that it was successfully compiled. Um, and now we're ready to deploy it to the testnet. So we're going to go in and create a deploy.js script in the scripts directory. You can do that through the command line shown here. And then we're going to write the deploy script. So we're going to have an asynchronous function. It's going to use NFT contract factory and an await function to set the name of that contract or to use the name of the contract that we've set. We're going to deploy it and log that in the console. So if it, for some reason, runs into an error, we're also going to make sure that we log that in the console. So we can deploy the script through a command line using hardhat by running npx hardhat run, uh, specifying where the script is, and then make sure to flag the network as Fuji. Uh, otherwise, it's really not going to go anywhere because we don't have any other RPCs on there. If all is successful, you're going to get the return to that contract on the testnet. You can then go ahead and check it out on Snowtrace uh, testnet.snowtrace.io. And then we're ready to create an account so that we can verify that on the real mainnet Snowtrace. So we're going to make an account on Snowtrace, go to the API keys in the settings, uh, and then copy that token and put it in your .env file. Not as like mission critical that you keep this away from people, but um, it's better to, to, to keep it hidden. So now we're ready to deploy it to mainnet. Um, so we're going to flag the network this time as Avalanche, and that corresponds with what we have in our module.exports file. And then we can also verify the contract on Snowtrace. This is basically going to turn the ABI that is online right now into something that's human readable, similarly to how an ENS name turns an address into something that is human readable. Um, so you're going to run npx hardhat verify, and then again specify the network as Avalanche. And if all is successful, you'll get 
the result in the terminal that will show you the address uh, to, to view that contract and see that the code has been verified. And it will look something like this. You want to see that little green check. And then also the contract itself is going to be decompiled from the bytecode. Um, so now that we have the contract up there, we're ready to actually write to it. And we're going to be creating an NFT from it. Uh, so we could use IPFS in the command line, but it's a little bit easier to just use web3.storage or nft.storage. Um, so to do that, you're going to upload your file after logging in with GitHub or an email. And then the file will be stored and pinned on IPFS. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it sounds completely ridiculous, but it's interplanetary file system. It's a distributed storage network, similarly to how we have the distributed blockchain. Uh, so what we're going to do is copy the CID, which is going to be here, and then add a gateway to it. So that allows us to reach it from somewhere outside of IPFS. So the, the structure for this NFT is going to be similar to what I have here. We're going to want to name the NFT. We're going to give it a description. We're going to specify what image is going to show up for that token. And then we can set app attributes. Um, I guess that's the word for it. So I've set developer, myself, uh, website, and then the conference that we're at. So to get this deployed correctly, we're going to create this JSON file, add it to our root directory. And then we're also going to upload that to Web3 storage and then copy the URI. And we're going to put the uh, contract address in public key from our ENV file in this as well. So this mint function, I guess I skimmed right over this. Uh, basically, we are going to set the, um, we're going to set the public key that this will, or the, the wallet that this will be minted to, to the one that we have in the contract. You could also put in a public like address for whoever you want to send it to. And then we can run the mint.js file from our command line, um, similarly to how we did the deploy script. And then we will see that it, we're waiting on confirmation. And if everything goes through successfully, um, you'll get the receipt, which is the transaction ID. Um, yeah, so that's, like, that's how to deploy an NFT and a smart contract. You can also view it on NF Trade. I think there's a few other marketplaces on Avalanche, but I think this is the one that came up in top results for me. So I guess now uh, we can do a quick little demo on the multi-chain API. Um, so our multi-chain API is something that we're really still working on uh, in like a closed alpha, I guess. Um, but it's compatible with Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Phantom. Avalanche, Arbitrum, and I forgot Polygon as well. Uh, so we can use an HTML post request like the one that I have here to, for example, we're going to get NFTs by owner. We're going to specify the wallet address and then the page size. Uh, the page token will be returned if there are more than 50 requests here. Um, but I don't think my wallet has more than 50 things in it. So we'll save that for another day. So basically, um, I have the site up here, but it's something that I built this past week. It's a gallery that pulls from all those chains by connecting your wallet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show that real quick. And thank you for coming. I know I'm actually a little early on time, so we can do some questions after this. So I have a React uh, Remix app here. And I'm using a post request with our anchor multi-chain RPC. I've specified uh, the method as get NFTs by owner. We're not going to uh, clarify which blockchain it's on right now, just for demo purposes. The wallet address is going to come from uh, Ethers.js and Wagme, where I'm logging in with my wallet here. And then the page size and page token are also set down here, somewhere down here. Anyways, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect my wallet. And we'll go ahead and click check my NFTs. 
and I'm learning how to figure out the correct way to do this from IPS, IPFS links because some of them don't have uh, extension at the end of them. But here we have one of the NFTs that I deployed on the contract we just went over. We have some on Avalanche. I've also got a few on Ethereum. Uh, and then some random ones that people <laughs> dropped into my wallet. So yeah, this is pulling from Polygon and mostly from Polygon, Avalanche, and Ethereum right now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's about it. I guess I should ask if anyone has questions or uh, yeah. Sorry, what? So you mentioned that uh, some nodes are free. What, what will happen if um, I reach a free limit of a public node? So if, you, if you're using a public node, where's the limit at? Uh, so we have like a soft limit on number of requests that you can send, and that's about a million per day per chain. Uh, on the premium account, there is no rate limit, but on those free endpoints, you're going to basically be rate limited if the network is busy. Um, but it's it's a real like gray area in terms of like how exactly how many requests that would be. Is the shared limit for all clients of the for that? Yeah, it's it's one million per day. So that would be for your IP address. Yeah, I think we're working on getting a. Pre, uh, free feature where you can have your own API key uh, to use. Uh, e either, I actually, did, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it will usually reject it, but I guess it also could be slow. Yeah. We can, yeah, yeah. So if it's a really long, like you're going very far back on the blockchain? Yeah, it might, you might get rate limited just based on how large the response would be. Um, but not the response, but the actual query itself, yeah. Yeah. A question about your NFT smart contract. What what is the use case of uh, counter? Why can't you just use a simple increment? Why do you need a separate uh, library for it? I don't know. Does anyone know the answer to that? Um, exactly why I need to use counter? It's just the way I learned. Gabriel. <laughs> yeah. Why do you use a set counter or use a counters? Gas efficient. Okay, cool. Yeah. See, I guess another thing about all this is I'm always learning. I think we're always learning. So thank you for the questions like that. I, I definitely don't know. Yeah, thank you for coming. I think that's it. Um, I'll be here for a few minutes if there's any more questions on that. But yeah, thank you everyone for coming. <laughs>